All right, so I'm healing nicely. <laughs> I feel a lot better than I did yesterday. Uh, and Leia kicked me out of the house, said you gotta go out and get some fresh air, so here I am. You got some ice cream, Dad? Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna do an unboxing here. So, from my own recommendation, I went and bought a real Baofeng programming cable. It is the one that is on my Amazon store. It's got a slightly different dongle than the rest of the cables. I want to check to see how this guy works right now. So, don't really know what to expect. I'm doing this live. It's my understanding that this is supposed to work though. All right. Channel mode. A new option showed up called USB Serial AI035MIE. Yeah, it, it works. It works perfectly. Well, that worked perfectly. It cloned the radio without a problem. 20 bucks, man. Saves you all kinds of mental issue. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna set up a, another programming. I want way more sheriff stations. I want I want my entire path from home in Cerritos to Redondo Beach, like 20 miles of distance, covered with scanner tones. So I'm gonna do that right now. Bit of a correction, it's the FTDI cable, and it works perfectly. So just uh, just go get it. <laughs> just use that one. It's gonna make your life a lot easier. Genuine FTDI cable. It says on the sticker there. Okay, let's see how we did. Scanning beacon. Contact. Uh, oh, okay, 73. Uh, okay, patrol picking up, and... Hey, uh, is, is anybody, uh, hanging out on, uh, 40 meters? This is the my report. Así que gracias a todos que nos acompañaron ahí en el colín. Aquí se dos golpes. Wow, that's on TRW. I'm gonna do something about that. What the heck's going on there? So basically what I did, uh, this is now my my All Us Fails radio, because this is set up for the front half of the radio, channels 1 through 40 something, are all scanners up and around uh, LA and uh, San, uh, San Bernardino. And then the remaining channels are all local repeaters that are around me and then local repeaters in San Bernardino and uh, Santa Barbara, which are the places I go the most often, Solvang and Big Bear. So this is like my all around radio for my day to day and the times I travel and whatnot for family, this is, this is the spot right there. So, okay, good, one less thing to worry about, right? The one thing I will be doing is keeping this cable with me. I'll be keeping it with the radio wherever I go now. This cable is awesome. <laughs> I may even keep it in this bag and just throw it in my in my little radio kit where this radio is going to go live now. Big fan. <laughs> Big fan of this stupid cable. It, you know, when I first started playing around with the Valve Fangs, I didn't think that much of, you know, fighting with it and making it work. But now that I've actually used the, the, the better cable, it's like, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> that was $20 well spent. $20 of getting my time back. I think I've spent, you know, hours, hours 
playing around with getting this stupid thing to talk to my computer. Never again. Before it gets too late, I wanted to share. My dad kept these for me. The Big Bear Grizzly on September 30th and October 7th both ran articles on gold mines. The, the first one, Lost Mines, talks about mines, some hundred something mines in San Bernardino County that are still around, abandoned. And then this one on October 7th was the Van Dusen Mine which is thought to be this lost mine that's still profitable, although nobody knows its location. And so question of the day is, you know, what is the, uh, where you live, there's always some kind of rumor of some lost treasure that if, if only people had just figured it out, had just found where that treasure is, there's some kind of mass, mass, millions of untold riches. I'm th I think of uh, Oak Island, right? Oak Island is one of those crazy stories that people talk about all the time. I even made a discovery show about it, right? About people going to Oak Island and trying to find the, these, these treasures. I myself, I don't put much stock in any of it. It's fun to read the stories, it's fun to hear the, uh, the local legends, but you know, there's a reason why these mines were abandoned. It's because it became too expensive to try and get the gold out. Gold has a value, and at some point, the production and the working and the collecting of the gold becomes more expensive than the gold is actually worth and you abandon the process. Or the vein runs dry, which is the case of most of these. Most of these is that the vein is ran dry and that just means they're done. They're, they're just, they're dead mines. They're, they're a big hole in the ground that, that man put there. One interesting point though that I thought was pretty cool in the Lost Mines article, there was a guy mentioning that the way they, the way they close up these mines is they use expanding foam. So they'll go up to the big holes, you know, because because what basically happens with mining is, once you find the vein, you just you just follow the vein. You just, if the vein is going vertically straight down, you're gonna follow it vertically straight down, and as you go, you're gonna use ladders to climb out. You're gonna carry your ore with you, and and that's how it works. Well, when these mines are abandoned, they're just these big holes in the ground. So they use this expanding foam. They pour it in there fills the whole hole up and out the front and then they use local dirt to cover the the foam and it looks just like a rock uh, apparently is what they say that's pretty cool anyway all right guys take it easy